All right, the next thing we'll talk about is specimen collection. Um, the biggest thing with specimen collection is that your result is only going to be as good as the specimen that you collect. So, collect a bad specimen, you're going to get a bad result. The first thing that we always want to do when we're collecting any specimen on any patient is verify the patient's name, date of birth, medical record number before collecting it. So you can do this by checking the armband, making sure that that's the right person. You always want to do a venous stick when possible. Um, do not draw above an IV. That's a big, big no-no. So that causes some samples to be diluted and gives erroneous results. We want to avoid in, um, areas that are bruised, that have hematoma. We want to avoid prolonged tourniquet use. So don't put your tourniquet on there and then go get all your tubes and your needle and stuff together. Have all that stuff prepared. Check your patient's identity. Put your tourniquet on and then start looking for a, for a site to draw, draw in. You also want to um, avoid um, areas that are swollen, um, that appear to be bruised. <clears throat> avoid fist pumping too. A lot of people put the tourniquet on and tell their patient to pump their fist. You shouldn't do that. Just holding it and making a nice tight fist is appropriate and that's fine. But avoid having the patient constantly pumping their fist. It, it can cause increased potassium levels. Um, once you find your site that you're going to draw, you want to cleanse the site thoroughly with an alcohol prep. Let it dry. You want to seat the vein. When you, when you begin to draw with your um, tubes, there is an order of draw. This is important. Um, if you draw one tube before the other incorrectly, um, it can cause also erroneous results. So when you're drawing, if you're drawing a coag, a PT, PTT, or an INR, you want to do that tube first. Then you'll draw your red top, which is going to be for your chemistries, BMP, lipid, liver, amylase, lipase, CK, any of those kinds of things. And then you'll draw your purple and pink tops. Remember your pink one is for your um, type and screens or cross matches. And then of course your lavender top is for your CBC or H&H &H or a set rate. Um, the, the pink and the purple can actually be e e either or in either direction, but um, this is real important if we draw the purple one first, that's going to give us a low calcium here. So that's really, really, really important. And very important to also draw this blue one first. As far as volumes go on, on these tubes, um, this one doesn't have any kind of additive in it, the red top. So, you know, if you, if you can get a couple of mils in there, we can do a whole, whole lot with that. Of course, we would like it to be just as full as possible, but we, we know that we have patients that are hard sticks. and. It just doesn't always work out the best that we want. So as long as you have a couple of mils in there, we can usually do a pretty good bit with that. Same goes for the um, purple top. There's actually a, a marking on here and they say, you know, they want you to fill it up to that line. But if you can get this even half filled to that line, we can usually work pretty well with that. Same goes for the pink top. It's got a mark on here that it, that it wants you to fill up to, but you know, you get it halfway, we're good with that, we can work with it. The blue one is going to be our only one that we're going to be really, really a stickler on. This actually contains a, a liquid anticoagulant in it, and we're looking for a certain blood to anticoagulant ratio. There's a big, huge arrow on it here, and we're going to want it filled up all the way. So if you bring it to me and it's half full, we're going to reject it. We're going to ask you to recollect it. Um, labeling. You want to label all your specimens at the patient's bedside. You want to use chart labels when you have them available to you, which I happen to have some. Um, you go ahead and put it right on here, you know, before you even start. Write your initial on there, so I would write KM. The date's already on here, or you write the date, and then the time that you're collecting it. When you take your label, Put it just right over the label that's already on the tube. We already know what type of tube it is because of the colored top. A lot of people will put it on like this. Well then when we go to look at the specimen and evaluate to see if it's hemolyzed or if it's filled properly, we can't see it. So we, we really appreciate it when, um, when it goes on just right over the label. 
that really helps us in the laboratory to be able to see the specimen, the specimen visualize it, look at it for hemolysis, um, et cetera. So we'll, put, we'll label our tubes just like that. Um, when you bring your specimens to the laboratory, they need to be in a biohazard bag. Looks like this. You're gonna actually put those on the inside of the bag and zip the bag up. Um, if for some reason you decide afterward that um, you drew the wrong patient, patient, you mislabeled it, you accidentally didn't label it, you're not gonna be able to come relabel it, we're not gonna let you label it, once it hits the laboratory door, it belongs to me. Um, it's we're not going to let you. We're not going to let you change the label. So we're not going to make any exceptions to that. So once it once it hits the door, if you know that you accidentally drew the wrong patient, please let us know. It's important. We want to make sure we're getting at the right results on the right patient. That's it.